all this month, 10 on your side takes a look into what many are calling the biggest public health crisis in Virginia, opioid addiction. Every day, an average of three Virginians die from an overdose of either prescription painkillers, heroin, or other opioids. Investigative reporter Chris Horn will look at the crisis through the personal stories of people in our area. Chris. Yeah, Tom and Anita, it used to be that car crashes were the leading cause of accidental death in the Commonwealth. Not anymore. Overdoses from opioids are at the top of that list. And each week this month, we'll talk with addicts who don't fit the mold that a lot of us imagine. We'll look at the impact on families when a loved one is lost. And we'll consider an often overlooked alternative to opioids for people with pain. But tonight, we trace the pathway of a potent killer, one launching this crisis into another dimension. It's the day before Christmas Eve, and I don't know if I'm going to be burying my son the Tuesday after Christmas. Pamela Person remembers the day last December when she got the horrible news her son Devon had overdosed. We know there was alcohol. There were signs of opioids, um, heroin, but certainly the most important and I think the most uh, serious was the fentanyl. Devon was with cousins out of state. His reaction was so severe, they didn't know what to do. So now they're all panicking and no one's calling 911. So they dropped him off. They essentially dropped him off like a bag of trash <laughs> and called somebody in the emergency room and drove off. Doctors resuscitated him, put him on a ventilator, and ultimately saved his life. He was one of the lucky ones. In 2016, more than 600 Virginians died from drugs laced with fentanyl, a tenfold increase since 2011. People who are using it don't know what's in it, they don't know how much they're getting, and it can kill immediately. The rise in fentanyl has triggered a public health crisis in neighborhoods and communities across the country. And right now in Hampton Roads, fentanyl is a huge problem. In 2011, you could count the fentanyl deaths on one hand in any of the seven cities, and then the numbers exploded over the next five years. From one to 27 in Chesapeake, four to 45 in Virginia Beach, zero to 55 in Norfolk. Overall fentanyl deaths in the region went from just 10 five years ago to 179 last year. We're talking about you know a substance that is 40 to 50 times stronger than heroin and more potent than heroin. Heroin traffickers realized it could supercharge their product with greater potency. Fentanyl is much cheaper. Uh, it's synthetically produced in a laboratory, so there's no growing season. Uh, you don't have to plant more opium poppies or harvest opium poppies. You can make it any time. So how did fentanyl end up in the hands of Devon and hundreds like him across Hampton Roads? Federal authorities say the compound is made in China. Then it reaches the streets in one of two ways. The cartels uh, either mix it with heroin uh, and ship it to the United States uh, throughout their across the southwest border, or they ship the fentanyl directly uh, to be mixed here in the United States. Once it's mixed, suppliers move most of it either down from New York or up from Atlanta. The appeal? A stronger high that's way more deadly. As little as two milligrams can be deadly if inhaled or absorbed through the skin. That's a troubling thought for people like Pamela, who nearly lost her son to the potent substance. The fentanyl is in his system, and the fact that fentanyl is so powerful in its effect, the fact that he is alive, um, is a miracle in and of itself. We have more information about this potent killer on wavy.com. Next week, we look at who becomes an addict and why most people who are getting hooked on opioids get their first taste from their medicine cabinet and not from a dealer. Chris Horn, 10 on your side.